comic book grail tier list in this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're doing Marvel comic superhero grail tier list. That is right. I decided to do a tier list video. I figured why not? Tier list videos are super fun to watch. At least they are, uh, in my opinion, on YouTube. I love watching other people do tier lists, even on random stuff. And I decided that it'd be kind of fun to create a comic book grail tier list uh, using the Tier Maker website and uh, do a video with you guys here today. Something a little bit different. Uh, might get a little controversial. Uh, to uh, rank some of these grails, but you know, this is just for fun. This is just kind of my opinion on these things. And uh, yeah, it'll just be interesting to go through this with you guys. Uh, but before I get into the tier list, you know, like, comment, subscribe, do all those things, and I would appreciate it. All right, that said, uh, in case you guys don't know, here is the tier maker tier list. Uh, what I decided to do here was just take the like, holy grails uh, or what is considered the holy grails of Marvel superhero comic books, you know, things like AF15, XN1, et cetera, et cetera. Just the ones that are generally considered to be the grails and typically they are the highest valued books in the market. And uh, we're just gonna kind of go through this list and we're gonna rank them. We're gonna put them in a tier list here. Uh, and again, this is just sort of my opinion on these things. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, everyone's gonna have different opinions, but you know, let me know in the comments what you guys think, what your tier list ranks would be. I'll put a link in the description for this tier list in case you guys wanna do it. And maybe other comic book YouTubers uh, wanna make their own tier list. And that would be kind of a fun thing to do to see how everybody uh, uh, changes things or, or how people's picks are, are uh, similar or different. All right, let me just go through the books really quick just so we are on the same page of what's gonna be ranked here. We got AF-15, of course, first appearance of Spider-Man. We have Fantastic Four number one, first appearance of the Fantastic Four. Tales to Astonish 27, first appearance of Hank Pym, AKA the Ant-Man. Uh, Incredible Hulk number one, first appearance of Incredible Hulk. Uh, Tales of Suspense 39, first appearance of Iron Man. Journey into Mystery 83, first appearance of Thor. Amazing Spider-Man number one. This would be the second appearance of Spider-Man and the number one issue of the ASM run. Strange Tales 110, first Doctor Strange. Daredevil number one, first Daredevil. X-Men number one, first X-Men. Avengers number one, first Avengers. Incredible Hulk 181. We're gonna go uh, with the first full appearance of Wolverine uh, for the sake of this video. We're not gonna talk about 180 in this one. Uh, and then Giant Size X-Men number one, uh, first appearance of you know Storm, Colossus, Nightcrawler, the new X-Men team. So I guess I'm just gonna kind of go down the list, work my way over, uh, and we'll just kind of see how this shakes out. So the number one book we gotta start with is AF-15. I mean, Amazing Fantasy 15, Stan Lee creates Spider-Man. As far as grails are concerned, I think there's no question. This is S tier. This is the this is the absolute number one grail, in my opinion, for Marvel comic book collectors. You know, if you want to have your hands on the all-time great comic book grail for Marvel Comics, AF15 is 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 your bet. I mean, Spider-Man, the biggest character in the world. Uh, I think later on, even today, we're going to see uh, a Spider-Man 9.6 go, go sale on the market or it be sold on the market. And I think that it's probably going to break the records. Uh, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, biggest three superheroes in all of comic books. I actually think at this point now, Spider-Man, as far as a brand, might even be a little bit bigger than Superman and Batman. Hard to really measure that, but uh, as far as the MCU being as successful as it is, uh, it feels like the Spider-Man brand is... Uh, above the Batman and Superman one, at least at this current time. So no question, AF-15, S-tier, holy grail. All right, now we get Fantastic Four number one. Fantastic Four number one, Marvel's first family. In some ways, one of the very first comic books that Marvel ever did, at least as far as when they were Marvel comic books, as opposed to timely comic books. We got... A 10 center. This is one of the oldest, probably the oldest actually book on this batch right here. You know, it's uh, a 10 center. I think this was a 1961 book compared to some of these others, a lot of 1962s, threes, and fours. And Fantastic Four uh, is one of the all time great books, uh, one of the most expensive, certainly on this list in terms of values. But if I'm being honest with myself and I'm thinking about this book, I think he has a couple things going against it. I think 
although the cover is incredible, it's not them in their costumes. So we don't have the iconic signature look of the team. And additionally, as much as everybody loves this book and talks about Fantastic Four being awesome, I have yet in my lifetime to see them be the superhero team that everybody claims that they are. The superhero team that is you know, the greatest in all of comic books. And so for that reason, I got to put Fantastic Four number one as an A tier. A step down from AF15 as far as Holy Grail is concerned. So Fantastic Four number one, A tier Grail book in my opinion. Now we move on to Tales to Astonish 27. This is the first appearance of Ant-Man or Hank Pym, I should say, the first appearance of the Ant-Man. Great book. Also one of the oldest on this list, a 1962 book. Very hard to find this one. Very, very rare uh, in comparison to a lot of the other books on this list. But a couple problems with this one here. Number one, it's not the Ant-Man characterization that we know. It's just Hank Pym on the cover. Number two, even though he is called the Ant-Man, he's not called Ant-Man until Tales to Astonish 35, if you if that makes sense, if that distinction makes sense. The Ant-Man versus Ant-Man. Uh, additionally, I think one of the issues that this book has going on right now is that because it is Hank Pym in this book, uh, and we have Scott Lang uh, being portrayed in the MCU, also Scott Lang being portrayed in a lot of the current comic books as kind of like the premier Ant-Man character, it dilutes a little bit uh, the, the market for you know the popularity of the Ant-Man character. And so for that reason, as much as this pains me to do so, for the sake of this list and proportional to the other books, I got to put this one in the D tier. D tier. Now, again, there's no F tiers. This is just my opinions. There's no, nothing wrong with, you know, being a D tier book. All of these books are exceptional books, but just proportional to the rest. You know, if I'm thinking S tier is the absolute pinnacle grails, A tier is, you know, amazing books, grails to have. B tier is extremely solid, you know, grails to have here. Uh, C tier is a little bit, you know, below average as far as like the, in comparison to the other books here. And then D tier is like, you know, a, a, a big step below the rest of them. I got to put Tales to Astonish in that tier list right there. All right, moving on to Incredible Hulk number one. Incredible Hulk number one, one of the all-time great comic book covers, in my opinion. A classic cover, often homaged, uh, Bruce Banner's first appearance, morphing into the Hulk. I think that this is a fantastic, fantastic grail. I, I think personally, this might be one of the most rare books to find in all of these grails. Um, it doesn't pop up often. And the people who own it typically hold on to it. So it makes it very, very difficult to get your hands on a copy of this book, especially ones that are high grade. I like that he's on the cover. I like that it's a number one issue. I like that it's one of the older books and it's legendary and it's hard to find. So in my opinion, I'm actually going to put Incredible Hulk as an S tier book behind AF15. It is, a, it is an S tier book, but it is still behind AF15. So a great, great book to own. All right, moving on. Tales of Suspense number 39. This, of course, is the first appearance of Iron Man. Iron Man, RDJ, amazing portrayal. Made Iron Man one of the premier comic book characters in all of comic books. Before this, Iron Man was easily a B-tier superhero, uh, but when RDJ came along and the MCU came along, he catapulted Iron Man into that S-tier status. That said... This cover leaves a little to be desired overall. It's the Mark I armor, which is the silver armor, which is still kind of cool, a historical uh, you know, suit for that reason. Uh, but it is not the classic gold and red armor on the cover. Additionally, the tri-panel, personally, for me, in my opinion, I don't like having the tri-panel as a part of the aesthetic. 
uh, for the comic book cover. I would have loved to see, you know, a more action uh, oriented portrayal of this Iron Man character. So for that reason, Tales of Suspense 39, it's going to go in the B tier for me. B tier, comic book grail. Still an amazing character, still an amazing grail to have, but because of the cover itself, I got to drop it down a little bit. Now we get Journey into Mystery number 83. First appearance of Thor, God of Thunder. Now this book right here is a great, great book. This is obviously one of the premier characters in all of Marvel, at least now. I mean, Chris, Chris Hemsworth's portrayal of Thor has been incredible. Uh, Thor has been catapulted back into the a-tier status of Marvel comic book characters. I like that this is one of the older books in this batch. I think it's a 1962 book. I like the pose on this, you know, the classic Mjolnir being waved around and knocking over the rock guys. I think this is a great book, but it is not quite S-tier to me. It is, however, an A-tier book. And I'm going to put this one on the A-tier in front of Fantastic Four, number one. I realize that that might be controversial for you guys, but I think that this is an A-tier book pushing that S-tier range, but just slightly below AF-15 and Incredible Hulk, number one, in my opinion. Now we have Amazing Spider-Man, number one. This is the second appearance of Spider-Man. This is the first appearance of John Jonah Jameson, the first appearance of the Chameleon, and of course, the number one issue of the legendary run that is Amazing Spider-Man. Kind of like AF-15, what do you got to say? Spider-Man, one of the greatest comic book characters there is, maybe the greatest comic book character there is. Amazing Spider-Man as a run, probably the greatest comic book run there is in all of comic books. But this is still his second appearance. And when I compare it to the cover of AF-15, and I look at the cover of ASM-1, there's no comparison to me. I mean, I feel like AF-15 is one of the all-time great covers, it is truly iconic, uh, it is dynamic, for a, especially for a book that came out when it did in the early 60s. When I look at ASM-1, the blocking to me is unfocused. Uh, and I think that the pose of Spider-Man is not something you would typically see with Spider-Man, you know, having his arms spread wide in that way. So for that reason, I got to put this book as a C-tier book. C-tier Grail. Below Iron Tales of Suspense 39 for me, but still above Tales to Astonish number 27. Now we go to Strange Tales to Strange. Doctor Strange, an incredible character. Obviously, uh, before we got Benedict Cumberbatch's portrayal of him, I feel like Doctor Strange was probably, uh, you know, a B tier or a C tier character as far as, you know, within the space of Marvel Comics. Always a, you know, a top level character. People really love, love uh, Doctor Strange, uh, generally having his own comic book run. But, you know, when we compare him side by side to the Spider-Mans and the X-Mens and uh, Incredible Hulks, etc., he's definitely always been kind of one step behind them. And that is also true of his comic book here because of the fact that he doesn't appear on the cover. Strange Tales 110 features Pace Pop Pete and the Wizard on the cover with the Human Torch. And as much as I love Pace Pop Pete, I got to say that this cover is one of the least desirable Holy Grail covers uh, there is in comic books. Uh, I think that that would be fair to say. And for that reason, as much as this pains me to do this, because this is actually a grail that I would like to pick up for myself because I'm a big, big fan of Doctor Strange, I got to put this one on the D tier. Above Tales to Astonish 27. A D tier book just doesn't have the cover appeal that you would want from a 
comic book grail like this one. Not to mention the fact that this is also a split series. So if you were to actually open the book, half of the book is dedicated to Human Torch, uh, and the other half is the one that we get Doctor Strange in it. So you're only getting half of the grailness uh, to this character. All right, five more books to go here. Coming in, Daredevil number one, first appearance of Matt Murdock, Daredevil. Now, of all the books on this list, this is probably the least oldest book. This is the one that came out in 1964. Uh, all these books are older. I think that's one of the reasons that this book for a long time has been less valued than these contemporaries is that, you know, I think that there's probably more supply of this book uh, and it is just not as old as the rest. So, you know, on the supply demand equation, this one uh, doesn't quite have as limited or, or is not quite as hard to find. Daredevil, one of the, one of the greatest street level superheroes there is. Uh, I know Daredevil has a huge fan base. Uh, people love this character. And one of the reasons I think Daredevil has not gotten the respect that he deserves is that he's never had the pop culture properties represent him in a way that does him justice, at least until recently with the Netflix Charlie Cox Daredevil TV show. But we never got a Daredevil cartoon in the same way we got an X-Men cartoon or Spider-Man cartoon. Uh, we never got, you know, a, a, a random 70s uh, C-tier movie made by the Daredevil character that we can kind of meme on uh, now because the effects were so bad. So Daredevil has never had those sort of legendary, uh, you know, uh, uh, properties created about him. So he didn't have the same kind of um, status amongst the rest of the characters. So this book has always been a little bit undervalued. But it's still a great book. Definitely a great book. I like that it's a number one issue. I like that it's got Daredevil written in the title. It doesn't have his sig uh, signature red suit, which I think is unfortunate, although I do think that he still looks cool in the yellow suit. Uh, it also has the panels on it that I don't particularly love as a comic book collector from an aesthetic point of view. So for that reason, I'm going to put Daredevil number one in the B tier. It's going to go behind Tales of Suspense number 39, but it's going to go above ASM 1, Strange Tales 110, and TTA 27. All right, now we have a big book, X-Men number one. This, of course, is the first appearance of the X-Men, first Magneto, first Professor X, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Angel, Iceman, Beast. X-Men, everybody's favorite superhero team. No question about that. I feel like the X-Men, in some ways, it almost feels like it goes Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, X-Men. That's how popular the brand of X-Men is. And a lot of that is due to the reason, or a lot of that is because of the 90s cartoon, because of the Chris Claremont run in the 80s, and because of the Fox franchise doing the X-Men. We've had a lot of X-Men um, be done successfully in pop culture. So a lot of people love the X-Men team. On top of that, we know that X-Men is coming to the MCU, so everyone is chomping at the bit, uh, ready to see what Feige does with X-Men. And this book right here, in my opinion, no question, this is an S-tier book. This is an absolutely an S tier book. And I'm gonna put this above Incredible Hulk, number one. Behind AF-15, but above Incredible Hulk, number one. X-Men, I love that it's X-Men in the title. I love that it's number one issue. I love that it has multiple first appearances. I mean, not just Spider-Man, Hulk, Thor, etc. We're talking Magneto as well, one of the premier villains in all of Marvel comic books. Uh, Cyclops, Jean Grey, Professor X, those characters. Absolute S-tier characters within Marvel Comics. So X-Men number one gets put in the S-tier list. Now we move to Avengers number one. 
first appearance of the Avengers and the origin of the Avengers team. Now, for me, this is my holy grail. This is the book that I wanted to pick up for myself, and I actually have a copy. I absolutely love this book. I think that this brand of Avengers, the name brand of Avengers, is the biggest brand in all of comics right now. You look at the success of the of the films, you think about what Avengers means to pop culture, you think about the kids that are growing up on this stuff right now with the MCU. I think that this book will be one of the premier books to own in all of comics uh, in the next 20 years. I think Disney believes in the brand of Avengers. I think that they will always make Avengers movies. The name itself is akin to Star Wars, like Star Wars and Avengers, just the name. That's what is significant to me about this book is that it has the name. Now, the thing that is going against this book is that it is not a first appearance of any of these characters, that it is just the first Avengers team up. And for that reason, it knocks it down a peg, in my opinion. But I still think that this is a huge, huge book. So for that reason, I'm going to put this one in the B tier. I'm going to put this one right in the middle. This is the middle book to me. Be still behind Tales of Suspense 39, still behind Daredevil number one. But in my opinion, I would put this one above Amazing Spider-Man number one. Because I think this one, as a name, Avengers, has just a bit more significance than Amazing Spider-Man as a name. Because Avengers goes bigger to other pop culture properties, whereas ASM is just significant to the comic book community, in my opinion. Now we go to Incredible Hulk 181, the first appearance of Wolverine. First full appearance of Wolverine. This right here, I think of all of the covers that we've talked about, I think this one is the best one, next to AF-15. So for that reason, already, this gets a bump for me. Wolverine, one of the biggest characters in this entire batch of books. I think Wolverine probably is the second biggest character within Marvel comic books behind Spider-Man. Obviously, it's always going to be hard to determine that, but Wolverine, I think, as a standalone character, is just that popular. He's one of the only X-Men characters that can command his own title run. So for that reason, Wolverine is highly desirable. Now, one of the problems with this book, in my opinion, is that it is a, a newer book, printed in the 70s, a Bronze Age book, uh, significant in that it is that popular and that valuable that you could lump it into these Silver Age comic books side by side. So that says something about this book. But because it is a Bronze Age book, there are many, many more copies than you know these other ones that we've talked about so far. But because Wolverine is that popular, there are just that many people that want to collect his book. We're going to get Wolverine in the MCU. This is an all-time grail. And I'm going to put this book in the A-tier category. But I'm going to put it behind First Thor and Fantastic Four number one. Only reason I have to do that is because these books are just that much more rare. So in my opinion, even though 181 is in the same tier value, uh, I still got to put it a slight step behind those other ones. And now we go to Giant Size X-Men number one, an extremely hot book. Another book coming out of the Bronze Age that is able to you know, take a, a, its place amongst these other Silver Age books. Uh, an incredible, credible book for sure to have. Uh, an iconic uh, title page, an iconic cover, uh, 
just one of one of the great books you know for all the reasons i've talked about with the x-men brand uh everybody loves x-men but if i'm really evaluating this book as far as the significance of it i do think that there's a historical significance in it being the turnover of the x-men team but if we're looking at the characters pound for pound what do we get we get the first appearance of nightcrawler we get the first appearance of colossus we get the first appearance of storm and we get the third appearance of Wolverine. So if we take Wolverine out of it, and we kind of take the X-Men turnover as a team out of it, really what we're left with is Storm, Nightcrawler, and Colossus, and also Thunderbird, but we don't need to talk about him. Storm, I think, easily is the biggest name character of all of the characters I mentioned. I don't think Colossus and Nightcrawler are on the same level as any of these characters, books that we already have uh, listed here. I do think Storm has the potential to be as big as a Doctor Strange or an Ant-Man, uh, that kind of level, uh, but she's not there yet. But I do think that she could be the most popular female Marvel superhero that there is. I think Storm is a character that could potentially command her own solo title. Uh, but she will always be connected to X-Men and she will always be relegated to the X-Men title, which is not a bad thing. I'm just saying she'll never be able to be let go of the X-Men, uh, kind of like Wolverine. He'll never be able to be his own character. He'll always be attached to the X-Men. Storm is a great character. It's a great first appearance for her. But because of the pop count, because of the fact that she's not there yet, I got to put this book in the C-tier category. And I'm going to put it behind ASM number one. I think that this book is not quite at the D level, where I feel like Strange Tales 110 and Tales to Astonish 27 have some big uh, things going against them as far as uh, grail books are concerned. Uh, they're just lacking that cover appeal, that costume cover, etc. X-Men, I think, is still a very, very cool book, but I can't put it uh, on the level, or Giant Size X-Men number one is a great book, but I can't put it on the level as some of these other ones here, and I can't quite put it over ASM number one. So that is my tier list. Those are my comic book rails for Marvel superheroes, my tier list. Uh, those are my picks and I am sticking to them. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Let me know what you guys think. I thought that that would be kind of fun to do a tier list of comic book grails. Uh, let me know what your guys' uh, picks are. Let me know if you think I am absolutely wrong here. Uh, you can scream at me in the comments. Uh, tell me that Fantastic Four should be a S tier book. Uh, let me know what you guys would pick in your list. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content and I'll see you in the next video.